God of heaven is a battle axe. The God of heaven is a battle axe. As uh, we're going to be coming from Acts the ninth chapter. My God, the book of Acts. The Acts of the Holy Ghost with the apostles. And as you're turning to Acts 9 where I'm going to talk about an axe. A battle axe is an axe specifically designed for combat. Battle axes were specialized versions of utility axes. Many were suitable for the use in one hand, while others were larger and were deployed two-handed. Now, axes are mentioned all throughout the Bible. In Jeremiah 46, 22, we see how God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon to overthrow Egypt by the use of axes and hewers of wood. In 2 Samuel 12, 31 and 1 Chronicles 23, we see how David beat down the children of Ammon with saws, harrows of iron, and axes of iron. In 2 Kings 6, 1 through 7, we see how Elisha performed a miracle by causing a bald axe head to float up to the surface of the water when it, uh, when it flew off the handle when one of the servants was cutting wood. In our text today, we'll see how God can call people to be a battle axe for the purpose of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to the point of killing, but to the point of bringing forth deliverance. Amen. Thank God for that, a battle axe. Our God, the God of heaven, is a battle axe. And we're going to be coming from a very, very, very familiar portion of Scripture. We probably know this by heart. And God showed me just something slightly different with this verse of the Scripture here. In verse 1 it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus for the synagogues, that if any he found of this way, which means following Jesus now, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined right about him a light from heaven. Now his intent was to threaten people, to breathe out cruelty, and if needs be, I'm going to kill you. He said slaughter, didn't he, in verse 1? Now this is a very familiar portion of scripture here. This is Saul, you know, this Saul is Saul of Tarsus, who was a Pharisee that studied under Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a doctor of the law who had a reputation among the people as a scholar of the scriptures. In other words, when Paul was going out to destroy these people who were following up the Christ, he was misinterpreting the scriptures. He was present when Stephen, one of the first seven deacons that was full of the Holy Ghost, was stoned to death after testifying on behalf of Jesus Christ. In fact, Saul even went to the extent of holding the coats of those who were going to stone him. One thing about God being a battle axe is that when you're his child, he'll come to your aid when you call upon him. God told Jeremiah, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that you know it's not. So verse 4 says, after this light shone down from heaven, it says, He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? See, whatever we do, we have to make sure we're in alignment with God. Amen. And he said in verse 5, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord says, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard. It is hard. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. The prick is the gospel. Stop kicking against the sound doctrine. Stop fighting against instruction. And know that God is a battle axe. Verse 6. And once you hear from Jesus, guess what? 
he gonna start some trembling. <laughs> And, and he trembling in it, and he was astonished, my God, my Lord. What would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what you must do. Amen. Not should do, not may do, but must do. See, when God speaks, he don't waste a whole lot of words on you. If he tells you to do something, you will know who is talking to you. Because he says, who are you, Lord? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And the man, now, 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 one thing about your deliverance is that when you see Jesus, others will be around you, but they may not just get what you just got. Oh, 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 all right, all right, all right. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless. They heard something, but they didn't see the man. Now, 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 some people feel something in church, and others are getting delivered. There's a difference between getting a feel good in church and being delivered. There is no timetable on your deliverance. You start your deliverance at home. You get your prayer life right at home so that when you come into the house of God, the Holy Ghost is with you, and hopefully today, he'll be in you. But you got to start at home. You got to start a personal relationship. It's personal. You know how you feel about personal, right? Don't be messing with my personal stuff. Don't be coming to my per Minister or no minister, if I roll up in your house and get up in your kitchen, I'm going to hear some things that I, I don't hear in church. Oh. God's a battle axe. He's a battle axe. They stood speechless. My God, did y'all did hear that? Did y'all hear that? Verse 8, and Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he couldn't see nobody, but they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. You keep playing with God and see if he don't blind you. I heard of some people, let me tell you something. God is real. And when God says he's a battle axe, you have to understand that if you don't do what God tells you to do, you will suffer the consequences. If God tells you to say something, you better say it. And you know it's God telling you to do it. When God tells you to go somewhere, to move somewhere, to drive somewhere, to apply somewhere, you better do it. Some of us learn obedience by the things we have to suffer. And many things the world is suffering from is because of disobedience. Because they refuse to yield to the battle axe. With one swing of his battle axe, God can bring all your enemies down. Yeah. David said, for thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued unto me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. See, you have to understand that Saul of Tarsus hated those who called on this Jesus. Yeah. And he had a mindset with some man's authority to go and kidnap people, kidnap families, bring them bound in chains, have them killed over. But Jesus stepped in, broke bad with a battle axe. And there are some enemies of yours who are making plans against you, getting ready to come down their road to Damascus, and you have to give them over to Jesus because one day if Jesus had to get out his shabab and swing back that battle axe, Something's going to happen. Don't get God upset. Tell your enemies, don't get God upset when he gets up off his throne. Because when God begins to get up off his throne, you know there's something about to happen. You have to understand when God speaks, heaven shakes. The Bible said even when God shows up, the Bible says that the storm clouds change. They change and become tumultuous like a storm. And thunderings and lightnings. In other words, when God shows up, he changes the very order of physics. Yeah. 
When he comes close to mountains, if they never spewed lava before, all of a sudden the mountain, the mantle begins to melt. See, when God shows up in our life and the battle axe is swung, we can't help but be changed. Saul's about to see this. Verse 9 continues. Now, he was three days without sight. My God. Now, <laughs> I, I love this part where it says he didn't eat or drink nothing. Because some people think that's kind of crazy. Not eating or drinking for three days. Let me tell you something. When you have experienced God, when you have experienced the Holy Ghost, you don't think about eating. Because you're filled. Oh, Lord, that's another teaching. That's another teaching. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that when you are in the presence of God, everything on the natural realm ceases to be of importance. And you can thrive on the sustaining power of God for days. He was there for three days without sight. He didn't eat or drink nothing. Verse 10, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Y'all know Ananias. He was an elder. He was an older man. He was a prayer warrior. And to him said the Lord in a vision. A what? A vision. Okay. He said, Ananias. And he said, behold, I am here, Lord. See, Ananias was a praying man. He, he had a relationship with Jesus Christ. He knew the voice of God. See, see, see. I might get ahead of myself. But see, we know the voice of God. Okay. Verse 11. I'm going to do everything I'm going to do. Lord, whatever I want, I'm going to do whatever I can for the Lord. Anything? Yes, Lord, anything. Okay, let's see. Verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he's in there praying. And he hath seen in a vision. Wait a minute, he's blind, isn't he? Oh, huh. you told me he was blind, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Make sure I'm reading the same Bible. He has seen in a vision a man named, my God, and God told him the man who was coming to see him yeah. by name. When God needs you to deal with people, he'll show them to you and name them by name. That's called confirmation. And putting his hand on him, that he might receive sight. God will even cause those who are physically blind to see who is really serving God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Amen. Verse 13. Now, we said he was a man of God, didn't we? Yeah. we tra he trusted God, didn't he? Yeah. he? He heard from God, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Then Ananias said, Lord, uh, hold on now. I have heard by many of this man. Now, 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 see, he went from, here, Lord, here I am, to, uh, wait a minute, Lord, a whole lot of people talking about that, brother. A whole lot of people, uh, I don't know, Lord. See, there, see how easy it is to forget that God has a battle axe? See, it's one thing to be in church, and, you know, the temperature control is on, and it, the weather's pretty decent, and we're able to drive in our street, and people ain't trying to kill you. Because there are people in the world who are literally trying to risk their life to get a hold of the scriptures. And they know what a battle axe God is. You find yourself in trouble. You find yourself when people are trying to kill you. The devil wants to try to poison some of y'all. Try to shoot some of y'all. Try to get a bullet in your crayon. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I still got the bullet hole in the frame of the car. It's only by the grace of God. It's only to understand that the God we serve is a battle axe. And he will fight your battle. I heard somebody tell me, you know, Christians ain't supposed to get angry. I said, you a liar. Because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible tells me to be angry and sin not. And it tells me to find a place for my anger. So guess who you think I'm going to go tell on? Jesus? Lord God? 
I trust in you because you my battle axe. Lord, you see what they, y'all better talk, y'all better talk. God, you know them by name. You know them by face. You know what she did. You know what he said. You know what they're doing to me. You start praying like that, and people say, oh, what, 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 you, what you talking about? What you talking about? You know what? Let me tell you something. Lord, thank you. What before? Lord, so many job issues. When I was at another job, and I was praying to get release, and after the fact, my prayer was, Lord, because I knew the type of man my manager was. I knew what type of snake he was. See, see he was like, he, he was like the, uh, the cousin of, um, of David, you know, Absalom's cousin. You know, he was subtle in his ways. Subtle. Sly. And have another get a cross right on his chest. And I had a sinner say, how that man going to wear a cross? He the biggest devil around. <laughs> See, if you read the book of Titus, even sinners will tell on themselves. I said, Lord, I can't deal with this. Lord, I need you to fight my, I need you to go before me. Lord, I don't know how it's going to work, but I just need, when they call me for an interview, please don't let him be here. Next thing I know, drop, his wife had a baby. I'm out for two weeks. Now, my God, I'm a battle axe. I'm a battle axe. You prayed, didn't you? He'll do it. He'll fight your battles. Another man came to me. He said, Brother, I heard, what's this you telling people that you prayed, you prayed, and, and all of a sudden that man, he, he was gone for two weeks. He said, I think I told you, Ms. Webb, what kind of God do you serve? That he answered your prayer? And he went, when they hit it, <laughs> can you, uh, the next time, uh, God's a battle axe. My God, my God. In verse 14, my God. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 13, I ain't finished that yet. Got so excited, forgive me. I heard a lot of things about this man, Lord, from many men. So you got to get away from what people are saying and to what God is saying. You, I heard how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call upon thy name. But the Lord said unto him, I done told you once now, I'm telling you again, go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, for I ain't never heard nothing like that. Now he's talking to Jesus. And Jesus telling him, I need you to go see about him because he's a chosen vessel. How in the world can God take a murderer? I heard what happened to Stephen. I heard what happened to them brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. I heard this man don't care about nothing. And he's cruel. And he's got so much zeal. And he'll, he'll lock you up, chain you up, cut you up as quick as he look at you. And now you're going to tell me you're going to save him? <laughs> See, one thing we forget in our carnal mentality is that God is a battle axe. I don't care what people have done. And that's why when I, sometimes when I, I get kind of ridiculous, you know, and Minister West kind of looks at me and goes, he does that. You watch him next time. He says, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, God. Oh, dear. Help the brother, help the brother, the brother gone. What I'm trying to say is, God can do whatever he wants to do. <laughs> Believe it or not, many of you are in here because you're unorthodox. And God needs that in this day and age. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. He said, go thy way. He's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, but in kings and the children of Israel. See, the same type of hate and murderous nature Paul, Saul had. God was able to clean this man up.
See, understand that when a person dies, the body goes to the ground. The spirit goes back to God. So God knows what kind of spirit he put into you. What the devil wants to do is put a foul spirit in your life so you can't do what God told you to do. This is why many of our children and many of us have had issues when we were younger so that the enemy can poison our spirit. So that we can't worship God in spirit and in truth. But when the Holy Ghost comes, it brings forth the truth that my spirit is set free. Now, I, for I will show him, verse 16, how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Did you hear that? So the same way Jesus suffered for us, you better get your mind ready. You better get your heart ready. I said last time, see, God will bless you, but there will also be with persecutions. You know why? To keep us humble. You know why? To keep us real. Because sometimes I get too sanctified. Sometimes I get too high and mighty. And my head starts like a bald head going all over the place like I know more than you. But Paul said, ooh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Lord, please move this thorn out my side. And God didn't do it. Oh. Say, what? What you talking about? Didn't you tell me if you pray, God will answer you? Yeah, God will answer you. I didn't say he'll do what you want to do. He said, call upon me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. He never said, I'll heal you every time. Did he? He said, if I saved you, I'll save your household. He never said you'll live long enough to see it. Did he? No. So stop putting promises in God's mouth. Trying to hold God on for my behalf. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He, the boy don't know how to act. I told Pastor he don't know how to act. Verse 17. And Ananias went his way. And entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. God's battle axe will give you a great commission. If you yield to his call, if you yield to his will, John the Revelator said, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. So verse 18 continues and says, and immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. You see the order of things? God has order in his church and we have to do things in decency and in order Amen. and when he had received meat because he was fasting three days right he strengthened himself he was strengthened then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus these are the same people he was coming to kill now he's fellowshipping with them Verse 20, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues Amen. that he is the Son of God. I think, I think Saul already talked about that. So, uh, some, some, may, 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 you know, some may try to live without him, you know, but I, I just can't doubt him. Come on. Amen. Some people waste all their time trying to doubt God, and I know from my experiences I cannot live without him. I know the correction God gave me. You have to understand. If you get to a point in time in your life, everybody's had it. My brother, he already ministered about it many times. That there come a time you try to fight God, don't realize you're already losing. Because he's a battle axe. See, 
there are some of y'all in here, see, you know, uh, Lord, there are some of y'all in here that y'all see me, y'all know me for a long time. And y'all remember when that minister from Tobago, when we were doing seven last words, come on, come on, over there, Emmanuel, and pointed me out, and I act like I didn't see him. Uh-huh. I remember these things, and, and if you try to forget, you know, that's all right. Go to sleep. I'll see you. God will get in your dreams. He'll get in your visions. In case you want to try to act cute. And then we pull a Jonah and we want to run away from God. That's all right. Go run. Go hide. One day you're going to be on a ship. Oh, Lord, help me. My God. Once you meet Jesus, you're going to realize something real quick. That he is the son of God. You may not have the Bible memorized. You may not know all hymns. You may not have lofty prayers. But one thing you will know, that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Paul said, for I have determined to, know, to not know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Verse 21. But all that heard this man were amazed. And said, is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for the same intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But so increased the more in strength, and he confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is that was, that will be the very Christ. These saints were confused. Now, I'm pretty sure some of them probably thought he might have been playing a game, trying to get them entrapped. You know, you know how people try to, you know, they have infiltrators. You know, try to set you up. Thank you. Right? But he was genuine. That's why they looked at him real close. That's why, you know how y'all are, when people come into the church, I see y'all looking. Y'all looking real close, like. The reason why they did this is because he was coming down to kill them, saints. But even the saints of God had to scrutinize, is this really of God or was it of man? Isn't that something? They had to scrutinize this man. And then there were, the Bible says there were some people who, did, who never believed he was saved for 14 years. My Lord, 14 years. They were amazed. But Saul increased his strength. See, when people doubt your salvation, you continue to stay at Jesus' feet. You continue to search out God for yourself. You continue to read your Bible for yourself. You continue your prayer life for yourself. Because there's nothing you and I can do about what people think about you, about your past, and what they know about you. And for any of y'all who are those doing social media, you know your business is out there anyway. Because you put it out there. Uh, oh, yeah. Now he's talking about my social media. See? 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 Verse 23. Now, one thing about accepting Christ, and this is when you're going to need to rely on God as a battle axe, is that as soon as the enemy and the enemies in the world hear about you have come to Christ, the first thing they want to do is kill you. Let's read verse 23. After that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. Did you see that? But their laying in wait was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to what? To kill him. That means they were scoping the gate of the city. And pretty soon he got, to, he, he got to eat sometime. He got to, he had to go to the bathroom sometime. He got to go shopping something. You don't think people watching you when you go to church? And they know when you come back? They know what window of time they had to cause mischief? Oh, Lord. But their lane and eight was known. God will reveal it. Don't worry about it. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down the wall in a basket. And Saul was come to Jerusalem. And he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But what happened? 
But they were all afraid of him and did what? Believe not that he was born again. You read it for yourself, didn't it? Yeah. One thing you're going to need to learn real quick when you come, when you make God, uh, when God makes you one of his battle axes, is that not everyone will accept you. In fact, many times, you will have to stand alone. But when you're on kingdom business, a whole city can be set against you, but God will be your battle axe. He will fight your battles when you put your trust in God. When you trust in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the Holy Ghost will send you help. Because verse 27 says, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. Sometimes God will send you a mouthpiece. Because, you know, it's kind of awkward trying to prove yourself. But when other people speak well of you. So Barnabas came, took him, brought him to the apostles. You know who the apostles were. And declared unto them how he had seen Jesus in the way. And that he had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of Lord Jesus. And disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him even still. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus, back to his own town. Then had the churches rest through all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, the church became multiplied. One thing I learned about outreach ministry at Parkwell is that someone can start off not standing you, not want to hear nothing you got to say. Then over time, they become curious about what you have to say. Then they tend to stick around for what you have to say. Then they want to know more about what you're saying. Then they, wanna, then they want you to stick around and pray with them. Then they want a Bible. And then ultimately, thank God, they want Jesus. With God being your battle axe, with every blow of kindness, with every blow of love, with every blow of truth, God wears your enemies down to the point they become your sisters and brothers in Christ. It may not happen when you want to, but God, but with God as your battle axe, it will happen now. Now, let me just say this. I've dealt with Muslims, Catholics, Baptists, Buddhists, agnostics, atheists, preachers, teachers, family folk, church folk. And every time, God's battle has proven true, has proven faithful in the battle. You got to understand that the God of heaven is a battle axe. And you know what damage a battle axe can do. You know very well. You see them brothers hewing down them trees. Imagine that on somebody's flesh. Imagine that on your enemy's head. Because enemy, because God will fight the enemy for you. So verse 32 deals with another person that God made a battle axe. Verse 32 deals with Peter. And it says, and it came to pass, as Peter passed through all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years. He was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, make your bed. And he rose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. The reason why people don't get healed is because they don't believe. This has nothing to do with the doctors or nurses. God has placed them there because he has ordained their gift of healing. It's an issue with you not believing on Jesus Christ. Why do we doubt that God can raise the dead? You have to stand on this thing. You got to speak on this thing. Even when you're nervous, even when you got butterflies, don't doubt. Yes. 
Yes, we must be prayerful over everything. And over everything you do from, you're going to see from, you need to be prayerful over everything from going to see a primary physician to buying a used car. But you must first acknowledge God in all your ways, and he will direct your path. But you must first go to the king, and I'm talking about King Jesus. I don't care what you're doing. The Bible says that there was a man named Jairus whose little girl was sick unto death. He came and fell at Jesus' feet, begging him to come heal her. And while he was walking with Jairus, the woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched him and received her healing. While this was happening, Jairus received word from his servants that his daughter was dead. The Bible says as soon as Jesus heard these words uttered, he said to Jairus, do not be afraid, only believe. We have a problem today because the world is too cryptic. It's too agnostic. It's too skeptical. And they want to have proof when God has infallible proofs of who he is. But people refuse to receive him as a battle axe. They refuse to let God fight their battles. They have to do it by themselves. I don't care who it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're dealing with lawyers, bankers, or teachers. I don't care who you're dealing with. You put God first, and he will be a battle axe for you and fight your battle. But you have to understand that God is my battle axe, and he will fight my battle. Many people are suffering because they refuse to believe in Jesus. They're ashamed of Jesus. They're ashamed of Jesus Christ. Mm, mm, mm. A shame. This is woman I'm trying to deal with at work, and all she says is the man up says, Girl, call him God. Reverence who he is. What is wrong? You can't out it. Your tongue is tied. He said, Don't be afraid, only believe. And when they came into Jerry's house, Jesus put all the mourners out because they mocked Jesus because Jesus says all she's doing is sleeping. All she did was pass out. The Bible records that Jesus said unto the girl, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say thee, arise. You need to speak on this power. You need to walk with the Holy Ghost. You need to talk with the Holy Ghost. You need to pray with the Holy Ghost. I know for a fact that you can have a dream about your child dying and you can rebuke death to the face. Did you hear what I said? You have power over scorpions and adders. Why don't we use this power? The weapons that we have ain't carnal. But they're powerful to the tearing down of strongholds. So why are we not using it? Man trying to bring me in HR, talking to me, well, Dudley, we know we're trying to transfer these ladies underneath them. I'm like, yeah? Yeah, they're going to be my technicians, yeah? Well, we want to make sure you don't show no favoritism because you know, you know what the ladies and, you know. I said, I said, um, I said, yeah, I know. So sometimes you got to help people understand their error. So I said, yeah, I understand, you know, because, you know, I, I deal with a lot of people and, you know, uh, you know, with different situations and, I, you know, different types of people, that type of thing. Oh, yeah, because you know I'm a minister, right? Oh, that's exactly what he did. Oh, you know I serve as a minister, right? Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 I heard that. I said, so if you have any problems dealing with some people, you come see me, I'll help you. Y'all better pray for Minister Green. Minister Green, I'm in you. Sister Jared, I'm in you. She know. Y'all know. They just want to get to know them more. And people just look at me, oh, Lord. You know, I'm the type of person you probably don't want to take what you know where. Because you don't want to act in public. 
don't see, don't come with me with foolishness. And they get mad at me, say, I got a wrong attitude. When you come to me with all that foolishness and that stupidness, yes, I said it. Stupidness. Thinking I don't know nothing. See, 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 see what y'all see what y'all did? See what y'all did? God is the same battle axe yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But you have to believe. I know for a fact that with one of my children, and she'll tell you, when she had a, used to wear glasses, and I was tired of it. That was just me. Because she was complaining she had issues in school. I said, we're going to pray and trust God that you don't need those no more. We spoke it and believed it. Next thing I come home, I see them folded up somewhere. I said, what's going on? Well, every time I put them on, my eyes are blurry. <laughs> so you, what are you telling me? You, you, you can see the board now? Yes, I can. You better thank God because he did it for you. You better thank God because he did it for you. I'm talking about God being a battle axe for you. From dealing with people's foolishness to claiming deliverance for your child. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So let's keep continuing. Verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, because they prepared her for funeral, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as little was nigh to Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. And they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. When people know you're walking with God, they're going to find you out. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, he brought him, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put everybody out. See, the reason why they were putting people out wasn't because they were trying to be rude, because when you're about to do something for God and be on kingdom business, you can't have no doubt creep in. If you don't believe, get out. If you ain't going to pray right, get out. Now, nah. I know they ain't kind of, you know, I know they may not be ministerial etiquette, but a scripture. He put them out. He kneeled down and he began to pray. And turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. See, you have to speak with authority. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, Saying the Lord rebuked thee. And you have to believe that God will make the change. Because signs and wonders will follow them that believe. He prayed for the girl. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa. Yes. And many believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with a person, a brother named Simon, who was a tanner. If you want anything from God, you must first believe that he is God. Yes. The Bible says that there was a Sabbath day when Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. And the Bible says that many who heard him were astonished with the anointing he had. To the point that they said, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he giveth to him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? But then some began to recognize him and said, wait a second. Ain't that the carpenter's boy? Ain't that Mary's son and bro his brother James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And don't we see his sisters here with us? And once they knew him, they were offended. See, you have to understand, when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
and being an active battle axe that some people just hate the messenger. Because they can't get past the messenger, they can't receive their deliverance. They got a problem who they hear the word of God from. They got a problem with who they hear sound advice from. They don't like who's telling them. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Now, I experienced this at my job where we will receive, I'm in engineering. For those who don't know, we're in manufacturing. So that's my terminology. So we were receiving parts in from a supplier that didn't meet specifications. Instead of meeting with a supplier to address the root cause, right, to get things fixed, some thought it best to perform what we call a rework or a modification on the fly. Now, you know, on these components get put into production. Now, the reason why I had a problem with this because I'm in the medical field. And you can't be, you know, nickel and diamond on things that people can be putting into their bodies. You got to do the right thing, right? Now, these are components, right, that are used in these devices, and you can't just be making modifications without proper qualifications. People began to give issues because I was saying this very thing, right, and oh, yes, they raised a whole lot of hell because of me. Because I was saying we shouldn't be doing this. We got to deal with the vendor and see why they can't make the parts right so they can get things done right. But because people want to take, take a shortcut, and when you stand up with integrity, now they want to bring hell to your door. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? So this is what happened. Now, they didn't want to make no decision. These are grown people with degrees. And they sit around looking at each other. They went and got her. Now, she's a director. You know, they got, they got other things to deal with. And she came down, you know what she said? How much money is this costing the company? Because I'm seeing all y'all high-figured people standing around looking around, you know, looking at each other, and you're not getting nothing done. She was irritated. Okay? All right. Now, now, now you know Minister Green, right? So hold on. Without saying anything to her, okay, when they explained the situation, she literally reverberated everything I said. Right? But when she said it, it <laughs> people turned into bobblehead. You know the bobblehead? <laughs> they bobbleheaded now. Now, 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 oh, now you want to, now you want agreement. But you know, I still need to get to another level of prayer because I opened my mouth up, and I said, "I'm sorry, y'all. I just got to say something." And I said to her, I said, um, you know, it's interesting how everyone is now all of a sudden in agreement because you're here. Uh -huh. What are you saying? People looking at me, that's it, they look at me like, oh, uh -huh. don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I said, because when people don't want to do something, uh -huh. they throw your name out. Yeah. Right. Well, they shouldn't be doing that. I said, well, a whole lot of people here are doing it. Uh -huh. And they all look around like, See, you know what? If you want to come at me with that, I'm going to come at you with that. Without sinning. And I said, it's funny because you literally just said the very same thing I said, but for some reason, when you say it, it's acceptable. But when I say it, people have an issue with it. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Well, Dudley, that, 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 that shouldn't be like that. I said, I know. And the very same thing that we, I was trying to suggest, they ended up doing anyway. And when they began to do that, the problem went away. It's because people are lazy. They don't want to do what they're supposed to be doing. They don't want to be accountable. See, one thing about being in Christ, you know the Bible tells us that we have to be righteous in business? It says that, you know. We have to be good stewards, not only of our money and of our soul, but of our jobs, of our employers, because we're responsible for where that product's going. Because you know, you know, it's funny how some people who work at McDonald's don't eat there. Because you know, when you're on the inside, when you're on the other side of something, and you know what's going into it, I heard some people say, man, if I have to go to the doctor, and they got to do a colonoscopy on me, I want to say, which, which device you using? What brand name? Why, why, why? I just want to know what brand name you're using. Because if you're using this brand name, I don't want it. 
And see, what happens, that flags a physician like, something ain't going on. Something ain't right. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to get people to understand is that this is a practical application of your faith. And sometimes you have to stand up for righteousness even though people are going to be rolling their eyes, sucking their teeth, breathing their onion stale breath at you because you are not saying, you're not going along with the crowd and saying what you, they want you to say. And God will be your battle axe and you'll still get the victory. And that's just practical, practical application of the scriptures. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area, and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.